thank you everyone for coming. Um, we're going to talk to you guys today about, obviously, how to improve your return on investment with ad targeting through research. Now, um, a lot of ad targeting is based on demographics. Um, here's a profile that you may or may not use uh, when you're targeting um, your advertising. So male, born in 1948, raised in the UK, fairly straightforward. Lives in a castle, OK, not many of you want, might want to target that. Married twice, wealthy, famous. That could apply both to King Charles, but also Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. So obviously quite a broad range uh, there. Two very different people, very different profiles, and very different wants and needs. Looking at the more regular person, um, you know, we all know that everyone's behaviors don't tell the customer's motivations or needs. So if we look at painkillers, for example, you know, we could have painkillers for toothache, period pains, um, injuries, Hopefully, not too many of you will have hangovers tomorrow. Um, they all need fast-acting pain relief, but for very, very different reasons. So you will target people you know, who have the same needs, but for very different reasons, and you want to target them in a different way. So really, you need to ask yourself, are you reaching the right people using your ad targeting? You know what they do, but do you really know why? And that is a really big, big question that you need to ask yourselves. And therefore, have you built the right audiences? So when you're targeting these people, are you actually, actually genuinely targeting the right audiences? David. So you probably have a lot of, especially if you're a CRM enthusiast, you probably have a lot of this. You know how many times they log in on the website, what they buy, when they buy, what they buy, how often, all this behavioral data. And, and then there's always trying to understand the why, and it's always that sort of that kind of a, uh, research that you've run, which sits in a PowerPoint, and it sits in silo. And that's what we're trying to understand, that we need to start bridge that gap and bring that attitudinal and motivational data alongside that data. So we have to change a bit of a mindset in terms of how we think. So research data should be made more actionable, okay? And it should be put in a place where it can drive business in impact better. So we're kind of suggesting that, first of all, we have to find the who and the why. So that's where research data comes, comes in handy, OK? And uh, I suggest everyone to come to our session tomorrow where you understand how we can elicit that attitudinal data through, 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 through research and our empathic survey design. But most important, we need to start connecting research data through platform. I mean, platforms here it could be your ad platforms, your client, uh, your Salesforce, your customer data platform, your CRM, whatever you have, we need to start connecting it quickly so that it sits where you can build these deep profiles and actually be more considerate and more careful in your audience targeting and actually activate. You say, why should I bother connecting? You know, what, what, what's the point? Well, we know, as we said before, you know the what, you know the when, but you don't know the who and the why. And if we want to ride the storm, we need to understand how people feel, what motivates, what is changing. We need to sort of use research data to find that and being able to plug it in where you hold your customer intelligence because that's how you'll be able to drive your competitive advantage, you'll be ahead of the wave. Also, for anyone who is here working more with insights, Insights may be all over the place, so make it work more for you. Bring it and connect it where your other data is. Okay? And that's how we do it. So to bring a more holistic view of the consumer, bringing together what they do and why they do it. But also, if the data is connected where you use it, your marketing teams, your CRM teams, your brand managers, then you now have a more accurate way to make that data not just connected but portable. The data, research data becomes actionable where you most use it. And the reason why is because it's the biggest dichotomy between two key words, efficiency and effectiveness. So everyone here probably knows about efficiency, you know, top of the funnel. We, we do uh, marketing campaigns and advertising that tries to increase always reach and exposure, especially with digital that is fast and cheap and you get impressions very quickly. But if one million people see your ad, and only one person click on it, did it go anywhere? And that's where effectiveness comes into play, OK? Thinking about pushing more into the middle bottom of the funnel, understanding how people engage. Is the ad relevant? We need to sort of move away from ad blindness and make ads more relevant so that you get more precision and actually more considerate targeting. 
So traditionally, we always use proxy audiences. And to make it a bit kind of simple is when you try to target based, as, as Nikki showed before, some common demographic, some interest, because you think that might match the research that you've carried out. So you think my segment looks like. What we are thinking, and we're not sort of rejecting this, this may work in some instances, but you also have to think of data-driven approaches where we use cookie-less matching to actually connect the research data across other platforms and model it out there for you to use. You may think, what's the difference? The difference is that you think the person in my segment looks like this other person. So we're keeping that link of real people, real customers, and what we're trying to do is simply use surveys to allow to create the seeds of custom data all about how they feel, why they do what they do, and we're able then to sort of match it and model it out for you to sort of be able to bring it in your platforms and find similar audiences. Now you say, why should I do, or why should I change? Why this change in behavior? Why should I change in mindset? So we thought we'd bring some numbers to show what the impact is. Data-driven, when comparing proxy audience and data-driven audiences, we notice that when you look at click-through rate, and for those who may not be aware, sort of how many people actually engage with the ad, clicked, call to action, and in, in, uh, interacted. We've, we've done a pilot across you know, two countries on the opposite side of the world, Netherlands and Indonesia. We see that we've seen four times higher in the Netherlands and nine times higher in Indonesia in terms of pe pe people uh, interacting with the ad without increasing impressions. And also, if you want to say, how about pushing that further down the funnel, we've seen that when people actually, uh, you know, the cost per click, especially this if you think in the ad, in the ad uh, platform space, we've seen decrease of 80% or 90%. So that's where you see your return on investment. You're, you're sacrificing your reach to actually get more people engaging, actually pushing down through the funnel. And in a big picture, that's what our clients understand when we talk about connected research data. It's about sort of trying to make data insights actionable and portable. And you can see, and just leave there some numbers to show what we've seen. In the example of our target you've just shown, just shown before, you can see that activation increased 10% in terms of that click-through engagement. But also if you think from a CRM perspective, we help the client refine their customer intelligence by 25%. And that 25% means the number of digital subscription they were able to increase through more considerate targeting. Thank you, David. Um, so just some key takeaways um, from this. So obviously, the data um, that you've got, it tells you what people are doing, what people are buying, but not really the why. Um, custom research does provide that why, um, but it's really key to connect the two together. Um, your data that you might have in your CRM systems or your marketing systems um, might be in silo, but it's got untapped potential there um, if you connect the, the, them all together. Um, it brings the data to where your business needs it the most, um, so all of your teams can use it, uh, say, in a very connected way. Um, and as David said, your audience reach might be very wide with lots of impressions, but it might just be too stretched. It might just not be targeting the right people. Custom segments as well um, as connected audiences can also drive really focused engagement, generate more clicks with maybe a smaller reach, and that's where you get your return on investment. You can spend less, but reach more engaged people, and therefore, hopefully, get more sales through. Thank you very much.